guys welcome back to my channel uh first and foremost i wanted to thank all of you guys for your feedback and your comments and your and your kind words that you guys have said to me on the last video that means so much to me more than you will ever know and i appreciate all of it it really means a lot to me and i wanted to just say that first and thank all of you guys thank you for the new subscribers um thank everybody for just sticking it out with me <laughs> i really do appreciate it uh today i'm coming back with another story time about um my ex leaving me in debt now it's not any normal debt you would really think of it's not a normal debt at all so we'll just we'll just do it quick i won't i won't make this one too long so i know in the last video if you guys didn't watch the last video if some of you didn't watch the last one it is uh in the how my marriage under video so if you wanted to go check that out you could do that so like i was telling you before i remember i said to you guys that everything was pretty much in my name because when we lived in canada he pretty much had nothing uh, I had all the credit cards in my name. With, throughout our marriage, I accrued all the debt. Everything that you could think of, I we accrued it. I accrued it within the marriage. I didn't accrue it outside the marriage because I didn't have any debt outside of my marriage. I accrued it in our marriage. And um, what had happened was um, I had to take out a credit card for uh, furniture because we have to furnish our home, our condo. And then I, like I said to you guys, I mentioned to you guys before that he was not working. So we had to use my my other bank credit card, which the balance was about uh, 6,000 uh, 6, on it um, as a credit limit. So because he wasn't working, we had to keep on using the credit card. I had to pay for his residency, the rest of it. We had to pay for the security course that he decided not to even follow through it because um, he wanted to make up, make excuses uh, to why he wasn't uh, wanting to do it anymore and whatever. And um, so right then and there, we already have a credit card that's $5,000. And then we have another credit card, which is six. Things were kind of hard. Um, I was paying it, but then uh, I wasn't paying it down enough or quick enough. Um, I only hit hard times with it when he decided to leave the house and I was pretty much left with that. Not only that, we got a, we got a vehicle, which was in my name as well. I was pretty much the owner of the car and everything and he was there with me with the we use his income his name was on it but pretty much they put it on me and stated that yeah he he he's on it but you you are the one who who is responsible for the car and that car payment was about 298 dollars every two weeks so y'all can imagine that's a lot of money within one month for a car payment on top of that the car insurance was also in my name which was around like 275 um so that right there was a lot of money in itself so when he had decided to leave he pretty much stated to me that uh he's not gonna help me pay with uh pay for anything he's not gonna he's not gonna help me with the credit cards he's not gonna help me with the car he wasn't gonna help me with anything. So he pretty much just left me in um, debt, pretty much left me to take care of everything by myself. Uh, he was not paying child support. He still does not pay child support. He pretty much just stated to me that he does not have money. He doesn't, he doesn't wanna pay child support. Uh, Cause y'all can imagine, uh, paying child support for three kids is a lot of money, right? Um, so he does not want to do that. He doesn't want to do it at all. And lo the, the thing with my videos is I'm not trying to bash him or make him look like a, a certain type of person. And it's what my truth and what you guys take what my truth to 
figure out what you want to put him a category uh to categorize categorize him as or what you want to put him as but i'm just telling my story and, and my side of it because for the longest time i my family only knew my side of the story and you know he went around telling people a whole bunch of things i didn't even know he he he, he said and which wasn't true so i <laughs> I'm not an evil person, I'm not a wicked person, and I only thank God because of the heart he gave me. Um, I didn't even try to fight him on the fact that he wasn't even trying to help me with anything. At that point in time, I lost a huge part of income because uh, being in a, in a one um, income home is not easy, it's really hard, especially when you live in Canada. And cost of living is really high there too. And the only thing that was really helping was the child tax benefit. I don't know if a lot of you know, but Canada gives a, ch a benefit called child tax benefit to pretty much help you with your kids. Um, obviously, because like I said, cost of living in Canada is really high. And they used to give me a good amount for them, all three of them a month. They would give it to you every 20th of the month um, and it would help out so much. And the money would always go towards my kids or anything that has to do with benefiting my children. I always use it for them because the money was for them. It's for them. It's given to the child. You know, what you decide or anybody decides to do with the money is your prerogative. It's your conscience you have to deal with because that money is for your kids. And if you're not using it for them, I don't know what else you'll be using it for. I don't use it all willy-nilly for anything. Um, we'll just fast forward to uh, CRA. CRA is basically the government um, that administers the money for the benefits and um, your taxes and, you know, everything of that sort. It's like IRS, basically. Um, so, I got a call one day from somebody from from uh, CRA and he said we have a claim that you never had your kids and that the children live, live with their father and that you don't have them and you're receiving the benefits and you don't even have the kids and then I said what y'all the kids are with me regardless the kids are with me they live with me and they were with me and when the guy calls me, I'm like, do you not hear my kids running around? Like, do I have to take children or something? And, and he's like, well, you have to prove to us that um, that you have your kids and all the, the dates that we are um, pointing out that you have to prove on those dates that you had them and this and that and the fourth. And I was like, wow. Because I didn't know any of, of that until they called me. Um, I called him and I confronted him about it and then he said well I didn't I didn't do anything that I was told that I have to file for the child tax benefit I was told that I have to do it so I did what I was told mind y'all prior to that he kept complaining and threatening me and saying I want the money I you need to give it to me if you don't give me the child tax money I'm gonna have to take action I'm gonna have to go against you and all this that and, the, and whatever like y'all he was threatening me and then he said the same thing to my sister that if I don't give him the money that he's gonna like I never met anybody in my life who was so bent crazy about money you know it was crazy to me and uh Fast forward to the CPS worker. She had called me that day, and then she said, "I want to meet up with you. Uh, one, because we have to make we had to meet up every month anyway." And then she said she needed to tell me something. And like I told y'all, the CPS worker was on my side. All of them was pretty much on my side. They didn't like my ex at all. Um, and then she said, "Here's a letter that he asked." He, we, we, could, we can't deny him we had to give him the letter he, she's like here's a letter that he asked us to write draft up for him I read the letter and I'm just like wow because y'all the date that the letter was issued and the time that they called me was a month apart I was like so you planned this I call him and he's like no I didn't plan it I didn't plan it I was just told that I had to apply for it. I didn't know they were going to do that to you. I was like, now they're saying I never had the kids. Now they're saying that you had them. 
Now they're saying, they're questioning if we were ever together. Now they're questioning so much things. You just opened up a whirlpool of crap for me. And he goes, well, it's not my fault. You know, just, just, just trying to cover his tracks and everything like that. Fast forward to a letter I got in the mail where they had said to me, oh, um, um, Pollyanna, we, we um, concluded that you owe us $45,000. <laughs> now, uh, and the worst part is, it's not like, like a creditor, I owe the government. 45 grand because of his actions because of what he decided to do because he was so selfish and wanted money that were it was not for him which were for which was for the kids it wasn't for him well i need this and that i'm like it's not you don't need anything the money is not for you it's for the boys and whatever i did with it was for the kids not for anything not just to do stuff that i wanted to do not to buy myself anything i would i'm the type of mom that will, will will buy my kids anything and everything that they need before i even get myself anything and sometimes nine out of ten i don't even get myself anything and it was just crazy to me how now the government's saying that i owe them forty five thousand dollars no matter what proof I gave them, no matter what documents I gave them, what uh, court documents that stated that the kids are in my custody, still they're saying I owe them that I owe them that money. It's like they're basically uh, they're basically stating that did I ever have my kids? I'm just, and, and if y'all can calculate that, well you won't know too well, but I'll just say it's like from when they were 11 months old, it's like I didn't have them. So, one, I owe the government $45,000. Um, two, I owe credit cards and car payment, which all came up to, in total, I am in $84,000 in debt. That's how much debt I'm in. Y'all... I don't even know what to say to that. <laughs> I'm laughing because there's nothing else to do. I can't cry about it. I've cried about it enough. You know, it's, there's nothing for, I can't like be angry. I got to a point where it's like, when you decide to let go and let God, you just, you're not upset anymore. You're not upset. You just, you have no more. You don't have that fight in you, you know? And all I did was fight and I tried and I tried and I tried and nothing's never nothing worked out, you know? And all I could do is let God take control of the situation because I can't do it on my own. It's just too much, you know? He won't help. He won't call them and say that what he, like, it was a mistake on my end. I, I don't even have the boys. I have so much proof, but it's like they won't even take it. You know, they won't even consider it. You know, it's not like I documented it. Uh, I documented every moment of my life when this man left me. Like, I didn't document that. And it's like, I'm in a, in a battle, you know, to prove my innocence, basically. But yeah, I'm okay. I'm not upset. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm okay, y'all. Because the courts, the courts are saying to me that they can't do nothing about the credit card debt and the car payments. They can't do nothing about that. But they'll see if they can help me with the CIA, uh, the the child tax benefit uh, charges that they're charging me with. I'm still trying to work on that, and um, I'm going through that, y'all. I'm going through that, and I can only pray to God that you know He's in control. Because when you let go and let God everything falls into place and everything's okay and everything is not you're not so you're not angry you're not angry anymore because it takes so much energy to be upset and to be mad you know i have three kids i gotta take care of and i'm not trying to be in a mood where i can't even take care of them because i'm in my feelings i'm so upset about the fact that i owe this much money right 
so yeah y'all he doesn't pay child support he's pretty much a deadbeat he doesn't do nothing for his kids and um i'm pretty much left with all of this on my shoulders but at the end of this god is still good god is still good god is still good he's still good i'm still alive i'm still here i have my kids you know i think that's the most important thing is that they're they're here with me they're living with me and we don't even live in canada we live in georgia so it's like i am away from all the negative things and the things that could cause me to be just so upset but i'm at a point in my life where god's in control he he gives me strength in my weaknesses he gives me strength in my sadness and my pain so at the end of the day i'm gonna be okay and i really appreciate you guys just honestly supporting me in just the best way possible so yeah y'all that's my story time i'm in so much debt <laughs> but i still decide that i want to put a smile on my face you know God is still good and God's merciful. So, um, yeah. I do want to thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys staying this long if you watch to the end. And um, I really hope that you guys uh, share this video with all your friends and whoever. Uh, that you don't forget to like. Don't forget to comment. And most definitely, you guys, do not forget to subscribe for more videos. I appreciate my new subscribers. Thank you so much for just being a part of my family. And I really hope to see you guys in the next one. I hope you have a wonderful day. And I will see y'all in the next one. Oh, don't forget to subscribe. Sorry. <laughs> don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget. Don't. <laughs> And again, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye!